you want to know more about detailing and weathering locomotives, why don't you stick around and watch this segment and see how we do it on Mayan Scale Model Railroad, the say her secondary. Hello everyone, Joe from Central Jersey Conrail and Inscale. Welcome back to the Locomotive Shop. So this time on the Locomotive Shop, we're going to be continuing on with those U25Bs and uh, yeah, this one's going to be fun. Uh, we're going to be doing number 2616. Uh, I was able to find, the reason I'm sticking with these numbers that I'm throwing at you is because the units that I got from Ben, the number boards were already pre-made up and I didn't want to get into doing number boards right now. So 2616 is going to be this locomotive. Um, I made the determination I want to explore those rainbow years and uh, lo and behold we're going to be doing a Conrail Black. Uh, yeah, this is going to be super fun. Uh, I can't wait to do this. Um, so talking to Ed Kapuscinski and um, you know the, the, he analogized it as saying that the these are kind of the punk rock of Conrail and uh, the rainbow years really were kind of punk rock because it was just craziness going on. Um, had all kinds of different schemes out there, you know, the Lehigh Valley, the Erie, the, the Redding, uh, Penn Central Black, and uh, and also, you know, don't forget the Penn Central was kind of just falling apart at the seams towards the end there, so even their their black units really were checkered too. You know, you had a lot of bleed throughs from the uh, New Haven ra uh, railroads, and um, the, the white stripes on the bottom had a tendency to bleed through because they used real thin, cheap paint when they were painting them all black. So again, uh, we're stepping out outside of our era here that we'd like to model, and that's really because I want to explore these uh, early years of Conrail, and I want to get some different looks in here uh, for pictures and videos. So that's why I wanted to do this. So um, not the, all the data is all the same. We're doing the U25 Beats, 2500 horsepower locomotive produced by GE between 1953 and 1966. To refresh everybody's memory, Conrail had 179 of these units. Um, they were all shopped out by 1979 into blue can opener logos. Uh, with the full dress, there was no, um, I can't find any um, evidence of any, you know, miss, you know, missteps during the paint process. You know, you kind of find those little goofy ones, but there was none on the U25. So, uh, that's it. All right, so why don't you sit back, watch the video, and I'll talk to you afterwards. Okay, so here we are getting started. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this shell off the chassis. Next I'm going to pull out the light board and I'm going to drop in the ESU Loc Sound Direct Micro Dakota. This is a pretty straightforward install. Uh, there's no modifications that need to be made. Uh, the board fits right in. Okay, so the next step is I'm going to solder on the wires for the speaker and then I'll connect up the speaker. Uh, again with this one I made a custom baffle using 040 plastic. Uh, I find that that works really well because it gives you the max amount of space and still creates enough resonance in the speaker to project sound.
Okay, so now I get everything in the position to route the wires I want. And I use some Capcom tape to secure everything. I like to do that, it keeps the wires nice and neat so they don't get pinched in the shell when we're reassembling. And there's the finished product. So for details on this shell, again, we had to do another brake wheel and a horn because it was missing off of the shell. And then I put the cab signal box. Okay, so here we go getting started priming the shell. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take it over and I'm going to wash it with some soap and warm water, dry it off really good. Then we're going to come in with some Badger Model Flex Primer Gray. I'll give it a nice even coat, make sure that there's, that there's no runs or anything like that, and then we'll let it dry overnight. Okay, so after letting the primer set up overnight, uh, we're in the paint booth the next day and we're going to start shooting some Model Flex Primer Black. We'll uh, make sure it has a nice even coverage and no runs and then we'll let it sit overnight. There's the finished product. Okay, so here we go getting started with the decals. Um, so for the decals, I use micro scale, I use three sets. I use the Conrail Diesel Data and Striping Kit, the Conrail EMD Locomotives Painted by Conrail and the Conrail Freight Car Kit. Uh, that gave me all the decals that I needed to complete the project. And there's the finished decals. Okay, so here we go getting started with our weathering. So I'm using Model Flex Sand to kind of give everything an overspray and kind of just break up that flat black of the engine black and kind of bring out some details. You'll notice that blue painter's tape. Uh, what I did is I kind of approximated the size of the Penn Central uh, lettering and put it there uh, before we started spraying. Here I am weathering the uh, walkways, handrails, and steps. Okay, so now I'm going to come and remove the blue painter's tape. And what that has done is it's masked off that area so I get a nice black area 
that looks like it has been painted over the Penn Central lettering. I like the effect. I think it came out really good. Okay, so now I'm trying something a little different, something I've never done on a locomotive before. Jim K gave me this. This is Tamiya uh, panel line uh, paint. And what it does is it's super thin and it kind of like uses capillary action to run around the panels and kind of outline it. So I'm using this brown. Unfortunately, when I began, I didn't shake it up good enough. But towards the end, it works. Um, so here I am putting it on. And then you let it set and dry. Here's what it looks like when it's dry. Okay, so now I'm going to come in here with some weathering powders and I'm going to blend everything together just so it all looks uh, uniform and tie it all in. all done I'm going to go ahead and seal it in with some testers dull coat Okay, so here I'm getting ready to uh, put it all back together. You can see that I installed an LED headlight and uh, you can see what the package looks like when you put it all together. So here you can see I added a blue battery box cover. Um, I got that idea from looking at a picture on the Conrail Historical Society.
Okay, everyone, so we're going to get started uh, programming our U25B number 2616. So if we pull up the ESU website, this is the file that we're going to be using. 16-cylinder FDL early. And if you look right here, it's recommended for the, F, the U25B. So the first step what we're going to do here is we're going to click download. We are going to select our decoder, and we're using the select direct micro. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and accept the data there. I'm going to go ahead and click open. And it is opening. And then what happens is it directly opens in your uh, local programmer. Okay, so here's our local programmer. Um, first thing I like to do when, uh, whenever I'm working on the decoders from uh, ESU is I like to update the decoder firmware. Actually, they recommend you do that first. So we're uh, running our update right now. All right, so I programmed the address, and now I'm going to write the sound data. Now this is the part that takes up to 30 minutes. All right, so we'll let that run for a little while, and uh, we'll check back. So let's get started with our uh, Rasta entry. So I've selected edit only and we're going to select new loco. So we'll come down here and select ESU and we are doing uh, ESU loco sound select direct micro. Okay, we're going to use our long address 2616. I'll put the roster ID. So I'm going to do the roster ID just as I do on my others. So I'm going to put uh, Conrail U25B number 2616. Then I'm going to open Comprehensive Programmer. Now that I have selected Comprehensive uh, Programmer, I'm going to enter the road name Conrail, road number 2616, manufacturer's Atlas. Model U25B. Um, you can put any kind of comments in that you want, and that's only like a read only function from the computer. And that will be all. So this time, instead of writing all sheets like I did uh, on the last one, you don't write sheets when you're doing an edit only f uh, file. So you just go up here to File and hit Save. And it says Saved OK. Once that's done, and close it out. So now we'll go into our roster. We'll scroll down to U25B number 2616. Now I'm going to click Labels and Media so I can drop in my picture like I like to do. Okay, so I've opened my media that I need. I'm going to take 2616. Actually, i got to move this a little more. There we go. 2616 and drop it in. Bam, there it is. Close this window out, and we'll save to roster. And we're good. All right, everyone, there you go. That's how we did it. Conroe Black, number 2616. Yeah, uh, awesome. Really happy with that. Really adds a different dynamic to the layout now. We got something a little different. So, uh, yeah, very happy with that. Definitely uh, punk rock. I'm going with that. I like that. Now, after doing this, I know you real hardcore Conrail fans are going to be out there saying, ah, your font's wrong. Yes, it is. I realized that after I did it. Um, so talking to Ed and some other uh, people who are familiar with Conrail, um, so what I'm talking about the font is when I use the CR, I just use a standard boxcar logo. Um, and what was happening in the paint shop in those early years during the, when they were patching everything out is they were using the old Penn Central font, which was kind of that slanted speed lettering. And uh, it was kind of real fat, and that's where the characteristic CR came from during the rainbow years. So um, I did not have any of those, and Microscale doesn't make it anymore. Um, however, I have found a vendor um, that I'm going to be ordering from very soon to get those slanty 
uh, Conrail logos. And uh, when I do, I'll give you an update because I definitely, definitely am going to be doing some more rainbow stuff. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun doing it. So you can look forward to that in future episodes. Also, wa walked you through the pro programming uh, with the video capture program and uh, showed you how I did my uh, basic roster with JMRI. Um, yeah, uh, let me know how everybody's liking that. Is it helping? Is it not worth the time? Would you rather see me doing more detail and paint work? So uh, put your uh, comments up for me. All right, everyone, so that's all I have for you this time in the locomotive shop. If you like what you're seeing, you're seeing this video for the first time, please subscribe to our channel because we're always doing a lot of videos like this. Don't forget to check out our Instagram and Facebook page because we're always posting daily updates of all the projects that we're doing. And that's all I have for you. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.